Good afternoon, good evening, people of God. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? This is the day that the Lord has made, orchestrated, and designed with you in mind. Woo, come on in, come on in. There is a word from the Lord this afternoon, y'all. God is, woo, he just be blowing my mind, okay? He is so good. He is so faithful. I promise you, if I had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough. So I got a word for you um, uh, this afternoon. Your purpose has been your protection, okay? Your purpose has been your protection. I'm trying to let you know. Let me just, we just going to hold tight. We're going to walk it just for a little bit this morning. Your purpose, the purpose that God has intended for you. The word of God says he wants to bring you to an expected end. That expected end that he has for your life, baby, that has been the only thing that has preserved you. That has been the only thing that has kept you. It's not because you're so good. It's not because you look so good. It's not because you're saying so good. It's not because your mouth is good. It's not because you're slick. Come on. Your purpose has been your protection. That is the only reason that you are still here. Come on in the room, people of God. It is no other reason that you are still living, that you are still breathing, that you have dodged every bullet from the enemy, that you have went around every pothole, that you have recovered from sickness. Come on. That you have made it through brokenheartedness. Come on. That you have made it through illness. My God, because you are still standing today, it has nothing to do with you. See, some of us have learned how to take God credit and we done got comfortable time about oh honey i'm good because my mouth is slick i'm good because i because i know how to talk my way out of anything because my looks is good baby it ain't been your money that has got you where you are today come on in the room child of god it is only the purpose and intention of god that you are still living that you are still breathing. Nothing else gets the credit. It wasn't even the medication that healed you. Come on in the room, people of God. It ain't the vaccine that's going to save you. I'm trying to tell you, the mask can't keep you. Come on in the room. The only reason that you are here today is because the purpose that God has intended for your life. Woo! I'm trying to tell you, y'all. <laughs> Blessing, Stephanie. Come on in the room. I'm trying to tell you about a good God. Ooh, glory. The only reason the drugs didn't consume you, come on. The only reason you didn't get AIDS when you was out there laying around without no condoms, come on in the room. People of God, the only reason you didn't get herpes when you was laying around with a condom, come on in the room, people of God. It wasn't because you are so good. It is only because of the purpose that God has intended you for. He said you can do whatever which way you want to go. My God, sickness couldn't consume you. Come on, mental illness couldn't have you. Come on, addiction couldn't have you. Divorce couldn't have you. Come on, generational curses came. How do I still keep getting up every single day, fighting, pressing through what other people have died in, what other people are not making? Why is my mama still struggling with that thing? Why is my daddy still struggling? struggling with that thing. My God, why did my grandma die from the very thing that I'm looking at today? It is the purpose and intention of God about your life. Ooh, glory. He said that one I must preserve because they're going to be a testimony for the glory. The car wreck, come on. It couldn't have you. Come on in the room. None of those things could take you out. It was only what God has intended, purposed you for. That is why you must tap into purpose. Come on. I was talking to a woman of God this morning. When I tell y'all we had a whole church on the phone, glory to God. Listen, I'm trying to go to the beach. I just ain't made it yet, but God is faithful. Listen, I'm talking to the woman of God and the Lord began to share that, that it is her purpose. The purpose of her life has kept her from danger seen and unseen. All the traps of the enemy come on, all the crazy things. Ooh. The Lord said, but her life has so much purpose. Ooh, glory. 
My God, listen, the incorruptible seed of Christ is in you. When you give your life to Christ, the incorruptible, God, I bless your name. The incorruptible seed of Christ. Oh, God, I bless your name. Hey, God. Woo. The incorruptible seed of Christ. You might go down for a season, but you won't stay down. My God. Oh, God, I bless your name. The incorruptible. First Peter, uh, let me see. First Peter. 1 and 23 speaks of the incorruptible. God, I bless your name. You can't blow it up. You can't burn it up. Come on. You can't beat it up. God, I bless your name. It's incorruptible. I don't care what situation I face. My God, I don't care what thing I get myself in. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in me. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. You can talk about me, mistreat me me, mishandle me. You made it through only because of the purpose that God intended you for in the earth. My God, that just blessed me so good this morning. That means when molestation happened to me when I was a little girl, my God, that seed that was in me, it still wasn't corrupted. My God, there were some things that happened on the outside. My God, because the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. My God, yes, he is a, a murderer. My God, yes, he is he, he is a, a thief. My God, yes, he is a wrecker. My God, but the indestructible seed of Christ, it lives in you, child of God. God. No weapon formed against you. It ain't going to prosper. God, I bless your name. It's just a season, my God. You got to know how to speak over your own life. I can't worry. God, I bless your name. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in me. My God, when my back is up against the wall, when I'm up against the ropes, when blow after blow keeps happening to me, I got to stand on the word and know that these weapons are forming, but they won't prosper because the incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in me. It is in him that I live. It is in him that I move. It is in him that I have my being. Somebody today, you will have to get up. God, I bless your name. Somebody today, you will have to get up. Pick up your mat and walk. My God. Somebody today, healing has hit your home. My God. Somebody today, you gonna have to come up out of that situation. You are no longer depressed by the blood of Jesus. Glory, the incorruptible. You just needed to know that you have forgot this thing about yourself. My God, you have forgot that you a child of God. God, I bless your name. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives, oh, whoo, whoo, glory, it lives in you. It lives in you. It lives in you. My God, there's a bloodline around you. God, I bless your name. Hey, the incorruptible seed of Christ. Oh, yes, it lives in you. Come on. It lives in you. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We got to stop getting so focused on the things that come up against us to hurt us. And I'm not talking about fleshly because I'm so over this fleshly. Oh, talking about your haters. I don't care about that. My God, there are some things that have really come to shake you. God, I bless you name. There have been some things that really come to throw you off your square. My God, I'm talking about those things that have touched you to your core. Those things that you didn't think that you were going to overcome. My God, those things that you have wrestled with in your mind. You wrestled with in your heart. You wrestled with identity. But today I come to remind you that the incorruptible, the seed of Christ, it lives in you no matter where you are. No matter what you've done, you have not went too far. My God, I encourage you to share the broadcast with somebody this morning. Listen, the incorruptible. Hey, shitty on that out it, sit it, sit it on that out it, sit it. Woo, glory. Oh, God, I bless your name. I need somebody to write the seed of Christ lives in me. My God. Oh, see, I love God because he just helps you understand. My God. He helps you understand because when Jesus Christ, when he came down off that cross, my God, they said, they said he came back. When he came back, when he came back with all power, he had keys to death hell and the grave because there was an incorruptible seed inside of him. My God. Hey, shut up. Not out of city. Every dead thing in your life, I'm calling resurrection power over it today. 
I'm calling resurrection power over it today. Every dead thing going on in your life. I'm calling resurrection power over it today. You shall live and not die. Your children shall live and not die. Your health, your finances, your marriage, your mental health. Glory. God, I bless your name. You just got to make a decision about your life. God, I bless your name. The seed of Christ, it lives in me. Oh. I love God. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it is living in me. I'm not doing it by myself. How you do it all by yourself? I ain't doing it by myself. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in me. My God, oh God, I bless your name. No matter what the enemy is trying, no matter what he's whispering in your ear right now, my God, I come to remind somebody of their identity today. Woo! I love God. I love God. You ain't depressed, child of God. The incorruptible seed of Christ lives in you. What do you mean? You don't need wine anymore. The incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in you. You're not stressed out. My God, you're being pressed. You're being stretched. My God, purpose is being pulled out of you. It's being twisted and shaped. My God, the incorruptible seed of Christ, it lives in you. Oh, I can't worry what it looks like. Come on. If you got to cry, hey, shut it out of this city, 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 out of this city. Woo, glory. If you going to cry, my God, you going to have to cry, but through them tears, I need you to say, God, I still trust you, my God. God, I still believe. I shall not be moved, my God, because the purpose that God has put inside of me, my God, it is with me. Oh, God, I bless your name. It is with me, pushing me, encouraging me, shaping me, my God. Helping me, my God. It is my help. Oh, God. It's the purpose. See, that's why I wasn't worried about no corona. Because I know what God has shown me. I know there are things attached to my purpose. And I ain't seen them come to pass yet. My God, I ain't seen that thing be manifest yet. So I'm just going to stand right here and say the incorruptible seed of Christ. Oh, God, it lives in me. It can't take. See, these things that come up against you, we only get worried. Because we think it, we think and we believe that it's going to take us out. You got to look again. I need you to get something flat-footed in your heart today. I can't worry about what it looks like. The incorruptible seed of Christ is my foundation. God, I bless your name. Oh, God, I bless your name. It, it, it is my foundation. Woo, glory. It is, it is, it is my foundation. God, I bless your name. It is my foundation. God, I bless your name. It's the incorruptible seed of Christ that lives in me. God, I bless your name. Oh, so no matter what I come against, come on. Oh, you gotta, you have to know some things about your God. You got, and some things you won't know until you run into that thing. Oh, oh, you won't know that he's a bridge over troubled water if you don't have water. Come on. You won't know he's a healer if you don't have sickness, but I need you, whatever that thing is that you need from God, I need you to type it on the screen. If you need him to be healing, I need you to say, God, I know you as healer because it doesn't matter if it's happened to you yet. You have to learn how to speak those things that be not as though they were. God, I bless your name. Speak those things that be not. I know them. I need you to write that on the screen. I know him as deliverer. If you need deliverance, if your child needs deliverance, if your mama needs deliverance, my God, if you need a bill paid, I need you to know on there. I need you to write on the screen today. God, I bless your name. I know him, my God, as provider. Come on in the room. If your mind is a little shook up, pet, God, I bless your name. I need you to know that he's a mind regulator. Later. Come on, if your heart is broken, he's a heart fixer. My God, these are not just words. Come on, these are not just words, people. Listen, every time I get to a place, I was watching a, 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 a worship service this morning and I was watching it uh, after I got finished watching Makeover Transformation Church and I bless God for everybody this morning. It was beautiful. God, I bless your name. As I begin to uh, watch the service and the praise team was just blessing God. Come on. But then somebody stood up and they said, you know, y'all just sitting there like y'all don't even know what's going on. And the praise team is blessing God. See, what I have to realize is that praise is something that is birthed 
in you, my God. No one has to tell you how to praise God, my Lord. No one has to tell you how to worship God. I just, I just believe it. It is the posture of your heart. Hey, shut down, not out it, say it. It is the posture of your heart. God, I bless your name. Hey, it is what comes out of your heart. Hey, oh God, nobody has to tell me how to praise God because He's been too good to me. Oh God, to be quiet. He's been too faithful. He's been too loyal. My God, He's been a friend. He's been a comforter. My God, He's been a bill payer. He's been a husband. He's been a father. My God, I'm trying to tell you, I don't need any help. But when you have not allowed Christ to come into your heart, when you have not allowed Christ to come into your mind and overtake you, no, it does not. Come on. When you begin to really understand he's God, because let me tell you how I know. When you go to a football game, you ain't got to tell them how to praise the football team because if they believe it in that team. They got all they, they they're counting on that team. They are rooting for that team. My God, hey, shut it out of that city. It's the same thing with Christ. He is my all in all. I'm not counting on the doctors to be healed. I'm not counting on medication to be healed. God, I bless your name. If he don't do it, it won't get done. Oh God, I bless your name. Come on. We gotta know that you don't need to have somebody to tell you how to praise God. Praise comes. From within, it comes from your heart. My God. Woo! Help us, Holy Ghost. When he is your all in all, when you understand that he is the only. See, the only reason that we don't really have a rich enough praise is because we are still counting on things. We're still taking the credit. Our heart is not postured correctly to understand that if it was not but for God, that you wouldn't get it done. That's it. Come on. If it was not, I'm, see, some of us were counting on our minds. Oh, honey, my mind got me through college. Baby, if the Lord didn't give you that mind, you wouldn't be able to do it. Some of us were counting on our strength. Oh, I'm strong and that's how I got it done. If the Lord didn't give you that strength, my God, you wouldn't get it done. Come on. Some of us are counting on our bank accounts. God, I bless your name. And so you're thinking that your money got there. My God. But see, all you need is one touch. All you need is one touch. The Lord can touch all that. Hey, God, I bless your name. You can think that your gift got you there. All you need is one touch from the glory. Hey, for the Lord to touch that very area that you think is what's getting you done, what's getting it done, the Lord touch it. My God, and the bank account fall through. My God, and the strength fall through, and the looks fall through, and the mind, the mental strength. All those things that you're counting on, when they begin to fall through, then... You hit rock bottom. Thank God that Christ is the rock. When you begin to get up, hey, God, I bless your name. Hey, when you begin to get up and you begin to give glory to God, when you begin to get up and look who you talking to, come on in the room, people of God. Lord, I've been trying to do it by myself. I've taken the credit. I don't know who you are today, but you need to get in the right alignment with the Lord because you have taken God's credit. Somebody watching today, you've taken God's credit. You think it's your money. You think it's your wits. You think it's your look. You think it's your sex. My God. <laughs> Woo, glory. It is only the purpose that God intended you for. That is the only reason that you're still here. My God, that's the only reason that the overdose didn't take you out. The suicide attempts didn't take you out. The crack didn't take you out. Come on. The weed didn't take you out. Come on. It's the only reason that your blood sugar got up to 800 and you're still standing today. It's the only reason that your cholesterol was through the roof and your high blood pressure was here, there, and sideways. It's the on your purpose. I love God. Your purpose, the purpose that God intended you for on the earth is what has kept the enemy from consuming you. 
How dare you not pursue purpose? How dare you not get in the will of God? Ask the Lord to cleanse you and wash you from all unrighteousness, creating you a clean heart, renew in you a right spirit. I want to move forward. Sometimes we get stuck on a couple of scriptures and that's just where we are right now because that's just where we are right now. Okay, we got to get this peace and we can't move forward. I'm still right here on cast down every high imagination. Let me tell you about the Lord and how he'll help you understand I love God. Listen, he talks all day long. People be like, God ain't talking. No, you just ain't listening. Ask the Lord to give you ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches. So I'm down here in Florida. I'm getting ready to go to the beach. And so I start trying to put on, I was trying to put on my swimsuit and I'm like, okay, we're going to go right to the beach. And then I was like, no, I want to stop at this one place first. So I throw on my swimsuit and I was like, I'm just going to wear my swimsuit cover up. And then I'm like, uh, wait a minute. That's not enough clothes. And I said loud, out, out of my mouth, out loud, I said, right. Come on, come on. My spirit man was checking the flesh. You're not about to be walking around in a swimsuit and a cover-up. That's not enough clothes to go to other places besides the beach. And so when I got that revelation, I had to stop for that moment. And the scripture came to mind, cast down every high imagination. Because what happens is a, just because of fault, pops in your mind. See, that's what happens. A lot of people have these thoughts. They pop in their mind that they want to type crazy stuff on the screen. I don't understand it. But the thought pops in your mind. Come on. It pops in your mind. You don't have to obey that thought. In order for that thought to become an action, something has to align. All right. Now let's let's break it down because I want you to get this. In order for a thought to become an action, something has to align. All right. You can't just have actions just not going to happen without your cooperation. Something has to align. So what align with that thought? Was it the spirit of God or was it the flesh? Come on. When you have the thought to drink and the alignment that comes in alignment with that in order for the action to go forth. Come on. It's not the spirit of God that aligned they gave you the strength. Come on. They gave you the, the agree. They came into agreement when you have the thought to cut someone out. Come on. And, and, and th that thought happens. What aligns? Is it the spirit of God or is it the flesh? Clearly, it is the flesh. You have to understand what is aligning. God, I bless your name. Cast down every high imagination. What is getting in alignment? What is getting behind that thing that is going to tell me, am I pleasing God? This thought that just came up is it a thought that is pleasing God is it an action that if I allow this thought to be fully manifest are the actions going to give birth to life or to death for many of us that I'm not going to put myself in that for a lot of people that feel like it is okay to serve God and still be worldly it's not I know a lot of people call me holier than thou. That's fine. But at the end of the day, the Bible says, come from among them. If you're the Bible says, let that mind be in me that is in Christ Jesus. So when you start to have these thoughts in your mind, when you begin to have these thoughts in your mind, what is aligning? What am I? Am I pleasing the flesh or am I pleasing God? Smoking weed. Am I pleasing the flesh or am I pleasing God? Overeating. Am I pleasing the flesh or am I pleasing God? Cussing somebody out. Am I pleasing God or am I pleasing the flesh? What has come in alignment? That thought. And what is going to be birthed if I allow that thought to become an action? Come on. The word of God says, teach every thought to obey Christ. Bring it captive. Hold it tight right here. Don't move on it. Just because you think it don't mean you got to do it. Sometimes you got to hold it. Okay, let me ponder on that thing. Is this thought going to obey Christ? Or is this thought going to obey the flesh? Which one? And then you have to teach it. Wrestle it. Damn, come on. Put it in a headlock. Come on. Teach it to obey Christ. Because your life has purpose. 
It has meaning. Someone is counting on you. And a lot of times we get stuck in the middle. I don't know why we get stuck in the middle. Don't get stuck in the middle. I'm just going to praise God and whichever way he go, you know, I'm going to do it. I'm still going to do sin though because God knows my heart. No. He said, now unto him who is able to keep me from falling. It is not godly. It is not of God. The Lord says, be ye holy. It is not holy to be cussing people out, listening to secular music. I know we don't want to talk about it, but it's the truth. It is not godly to be dressed inappropriate. It is not godly to be overindulging in food. Come on. We're, we're continuing to go down this path. There is an area of purity that God desires us to walk in. He said, I will make your crooked path straight. All right. So just start. Start wherever you starting, but keep allowing him to make it. Keep allowing him to make that path straight for you. You don't have to be who you was. He who is in Christ as a new creation and old things are passed away. Listen, it matters what kind of church you go to. It matters what kind of word you sit under. That was the first thing that the Lord did for me. When the Lord really began to change my life for real, I had went to church all my life with pastors that was half doing God, honey. They was doing whatever they was doing, bless God. I went to church for my whole life with those kind of lukewarm pastors. The first thing God did was change my church home because I wasn't going to get saved there. I was, was going to go right to hell from the pews because the pastor had no standard of holiness. My God, there has to, there is a, the word of God, says there is a standard and a full measure of Christ. There, we cannot live half and half. It's called double-minded. The word of God says a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh, Hezekiah, when the Lord came and sent the prophet to tell him, hey, you getting ready to lose your life. When Hezekiah went and talked to God about that thing, he said, Lord, I have served you single-mindedly. This thing in the mind is real to God. I have served you single-mindedly. Cast down every high imagination. They start in the mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your what? Of your mind. Your mind, the way you think is important to God. That is why the Lord is saying, he said, let me transform the way you think. Let me transform your mind. Let me, tra let me create in you a new creation by the way you think. Okay? Faith comes by what? Hearing. Hearing by what? The word of God. All right. So that is why it is so important who you sit under. It is important where you go to church. You cannot keep going to fluff, fluff, pretty, motivational speech. Oh, that's good, baby. Is there any holiness? Is there any conviction? Is there any righteousness? I'm tired. All of these mega churches, they just fashion shows. It's, it just is. A lot of them. I'm not going to say all of them because I ain't been to all of them. But a lot of them are fashion shows. We're so The pastor is worried about having a personal stylist putting on skinny jeans and putting on a big bow on the blouse. We're worrying about being fashion stars. Where is the holiness? The word of God says without holiness, no man can see God. So I don't know, I don't know what, what kind of, I don't know what Bible people are reading, but the word of, Lord, of the Lord requires holiness. And it's not about a long dress. It's not about do you have makeup on or do you not have makeup on. It is a heart posture. And when your heart is a certain thing, it produces, God, I bless your name. It produces, God, I bless your name. Your heart produces your character. Your character produces your actions. So really, at the end of the day, you should not have to tell nobody you're a child of God. They should be able to see it in the way you live, in the way you carry yourself. It's confusing to see pastors online drinking and, and listening to party music. It's crazy. It's crazy. We don't, we, we, it's a conversation we don't like to have. But you got to be willing. I remember a sermon. I'll never forget this. Juanita Bynum said when she got saved, she said nowadays people getting saved, it's just I don't know what's going on. She said, but I remember when I got saved, she said they asked me one question when I walked to that altar. She said they asked me, are you ready to leave the world behind? Because you're going to have to. You're going to have to leave the world behind, worldly ways behind. Listen, even our dress code, you know, I, I talk about that a lot because it is important. You should, let's, let's take, all right, let's take a, let's take a um, snapshot 
of your last six uh, posts online with the pictures of yourself, okay? If without words, without any words, we just looked at the picture, do you look like a woman of God or a woman of the world? Do you look like a man of God or a man of the world? Come on. I just need the process. We got to, it, it, it matters because the word of God says that man judges on the outward appearance. And I'm not talking about the babes in Christ because you got to come as you are. But if you really came, hey, God, I bless you. Now, if you really came, he who is in Christ is a new creation. You don't want to wear clothes that are inappropriate. You don't want to be uh, in undressed. You want to be covered. I'm trying. This is my testimony. I loved skin tight dresses. Y'all, I loved it. That was my favorite thing. I couldn't wear things that were, wow. I couldn't wear things that were uh, loose. Y'all, I used to say I was claustrophobic in a turtleneck. I used to say I was claustrophobic in a t-shirt. T-shirt? Oh, I can't wear t-shirts. Come on. I used to feel that way. But it was because something on the inside of me did not desire holiness. I was trying to cover up ugly with pretty. I was trying to cover up ugly, the ugliness of my heart, the brokenness of being left, being abused, being neglected, being mistreated. I was trying to cover up ugly with pretty. I was trying to cover up ugly with pretty. Come on. Some of us, it's not pretty the thing you're trying to cover ugly. Some of you, it's alcohol. You're drinking. When someone is drinking every day, we can say we don't, we're not an alcoholic, but when you're drinking every day, some people, they, you, you have learned how to monitor it, so you're not an alcoholic for every day, but you drink every weekend. Come on. You can't get through 30 days without a drink. There's something going on, and it's not about condemnation. It's a heart posture. So your, your prayer has to be creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Help me. You got to be willing to allow God into those areas of your life. Stop getting offended by the word of God. It's not to be offensive. It's to save you. Come on. Think about when Batman or Superman or Spider-Man, when they go to save somebody, they have to sometimes snatch them up. Sometimes they got to snatch you up out of your area. You ain't like, oh, you messed my hair up, Batman. Help me. Oh, no. You just, okay, thank God you saved me. Come on. I went and preached somewhere a, a little while back, and I got a report the other day. And the report was that one of the, I was preaching about sin. Whatever the Lord put on my heart, that's what I was preaching about. I didn't know one of the, the people that there was gay. And she said, she said, I came to, and I did not know I was coming to a gay bashing. You're coming to the word of God and when the Lord is not for homosexuality. It's not about a gay bash. It was, we're, we're trying to make a difference. There is a difference between God and the world. And so she said, well, she said, well, but it's okay. I just put that part out of my mind. That's crazy. Because what you don't realize is that you're rejecting Christ. And you're rejecting the opportunity to be saved. The Lord made it clear to you so that you would not be ignorant. Come on. But that's what a lot of people are doing. Oh, when it comes to holiness preaching, I don't know, girl. I don't hear all of that. You know, I just want my motivational, yes, and God is good. I just want that, you know, light. Just give me that, just whoo. I just want the sugar word. Come on. I want to stay on milk my whole life. Come on. If you're going to stay on the milk of the word your whole life, then stay on milk. Stay on Infamil your whole life. You're not satisfied with Infamil at 25. You're not satisfied with Infamil at 5. Why are we wanting to stay on Infamil? Come on. In the word of God, when the Lord says grow up, mature, your purpose. There are people that need to hear your voice. You got to be willing to get free. A part of being truly free is being able to tell your full testimony. I'm here to tell you, you're not free if you can't tell your full testimony. Don't, don't, oh, you know, I don't tell nobody, but you're not free because he who is in Christ is a new creation and old things are passed away. And you may or may not do that thing anymore, but when it's in secret, now you still have the opportunity to do it because no, it's not, there's no light been brought to the area. It's not been exposed. Come on. There's no area of accountability. Come on in the wrong people of God. You have to be willing to get free daily. You got to be willing to let God transform you. You got to be willing to tell your full and complete testimony. This is the thing. 
Sometimes the one thing that holds people back is shame and condemnation. But at the end of the day, baby, I need you to know God seen it. Wait a minute. Just like hold tight. God seen it. Hold up. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ, the son, God, the father and the Holy Spirit. They seen it. They were there. Who is anyone else? If God seen it, and he still let you live, can't worry about nobody else's opinion. Because your testimony, the only reason you survived it is because your purpose. God allowed you to overcome so that you could share with somebody that yes, I went through this, that, this, that, this, that, that, and this. And I'm the proof that you can make it out. I'm the proof that you can be an overcomer. I'm the proof. I'm not here to condemn. I'm here to tell you that God is able to bring you out of that very situation. It is not even your testimony. Okay, let me make this thing clear. It is not even your testimony. When you say it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, it's no longer your testimony. Because the word of God also says we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Okay, so I want us to understand that your testimony is going to help so many people. Don't not share your testimony. I don't know when, I don't know how, but you need to get comfortable in tell, tell it to the mirror first, all right? If you've never shared your whole and complete testimony, get in your bathroom, close the door, and tell your whole testimony. Get comfortable with it rolling off of your lips. Okay, I need you to understand that. Tell your testimony this. The time is coming. We need all hands on deck. My testimony is only my testimony, but your testimony is a whole new light. And all hands have to be on deck. God is so good, y'all. Your purpose has kept you. Your purpose. I think of all the people behind us. And when your purpose is done, that's it. But I don't want to leave this earth without my work undone. I told my daughter that just the other night. I said, heaven, listen, I love you. I said, my purpose, I had to make peace with it. We talked about that the other day. I had to make peace with my purpose if I never... Let me, let me go this way. I had to make peace with what I bring to the table and who I am. And I'm just the mama that God chose for you. And I told her, I said, you know, I, I might not be known for the most adventurous mom, the mom that had all the fun, the mom that threw all the parties and this, that, and the third. But what I will be known for is the mom that loved you to the best of her ability, the mom that loved God to the best of her ability, the mom that spirit that worshiped him in spirit and in truth to the best of my ability. I, when I leave this earth, I want to be able to leave you an inheritance of faith. The word of God says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. I want to leave you an inheritance of generational blessings. And I'm not just talking about money. Because my, if I only leave you money, I still didn't do good by you. I got to teach you faith principles. I have to teach you how to navigate, how to discern, my God, how to pray, how to stand, how to endure, how to long suffer. Come on. If we're not teaching that, we're not being a good parent. I don't care. Listen, I used to have all the, the room. The kids had the best rooms. I had all their walls painted so beautiful. They had all the clothes, the hair bows, the shoes. Baby, they was just cute. We went on places. We visited places. We did fun things. My God. But none of that matters. None of that matters when your child is caught up in the grips of Satan 
got his hands around your son's neck. My God, squeezing the life out of him. And you haven't taught him how to stand on the word of God, how to call out to Jesus when my heart is breaking, when I find myself in a situation, when I'm in the middle of something facing me that's bigger than me, when Goliath is standing up against me, when Goliath is standing right in front of my face and my daddy didn't have the courage to take that thing out and my brother didn't have the courage to take that thing out and all I got is a slingshot, but I'm standing here my God, you going to have to teach your children how to stand. Hold on to the sword of the spirit. Be girded up with truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Walk in the shoes of peace, carrying the sword. Of the spirit, if you ain't doing that, baby, you, I don't care about the earthly things. Your purpose is what is keeping you. Your purpose is what is interrupting the plots and the plans of the enemy. Your purpose is what is bringing other people into your life and shifting other people out. Because God wants you to get to where he needs you to be. Your voice is needed in the earth, woman of God. Your voice is needed in the earth, man of God. Your voice is needed in your home. Your husband needs to hear your voice. Your wife needs to hear your voice. Your children need to hear your voice thought about something this morning as I was trying to wake up my daughter of whom is still getting her beauty rest I was giving her some kisses on her cheek and I, I was thinking I said I hope my love to my children is ooey gooey warm like a chocolate chip cookie I hope that's how they receive it it's hot it's warm and it's ooey gooey and I was calling her beautiful and I thought about it it was like I had a whole moment. When people call you beautiful, but they treat you ugly, it causes confusion in our hearts. And a lot of parents, when you're calling our children beautiful, but we treat them ugly, cussing at them, not being a godly example, not treating our own body as the temple of God. Women of God, if you still wear tight dresses, that's why your daughter think it's okay to wear tight dresses. And, skin tight stretch pants because you still wearing them. Men of God, if you still trying to dress like the NBA wide boy, whatever his name is, if you still trying to dress like him, that's why your son has not realized that there is a higher standard. There is a higher standard of life. Come on. There is a standard. And as the older people, as the mature people, children, they're looking up to us. Younger ones are looking up. And so when they look, and the Lord always, I love God. He be keeping me checked. Because I still have to struggle and wrestle down that fashion demon. Because I loved fashion. I loved ED. I loved fashion. And so there are times when I want to be like, woo, yes. I still got good clothes in my closet. Bless God, y'all. Okay, just because y'all see me in regular stuff. I got a whole closet of clothes. But I never want anyone to feel like a woman of God has to be razzle-dazzle. She has to be on point every time she goes out of the house. She has to be fly every time she goes out of the house. Maybe that don't make me no woman of God. Maybe I preach, pray, and prophesy in my bathrobe with my braids sticking up. Okay? Come on. There has to be a standard righteousness and holiness attached to your purpose start today whatever that start today start writing it out get in your word build that connection with god build with like-minded people and continue to progress i was watching my aunt this morning and it blessed me because i, I was actually god is so faithful honey when i tell you i had whole church while church was going on i was actually praying with somebody on the phone uh it ended up being that i was praying with someone on the phone while service was going on but i just was watching her posture and it blessed me because it, it was a beautiful thing to see when she did not when she got started she was like oh, don't worry. Oh, i'm uncomfortable oh. but to see her continuing on the journey walking that thing out it's beautiful 
It's beautiful, but you got to be willing to do it afraid, do it uncomfortable. Another woman of God, Tamika, she got on there and she's been doing her, she's been doing the in and out prayer. And it's been beautiful to watch people progress, let people blossom. If you only want to hear the people of God when they're fully manifest, you're missing out because you get to watch the process. It's okay if we mess up. That's okay. It's okay. Give people room. It's a perfectionist spirit that lives in our heart that won't even give you, won't give you room to mess up. I didn't really want to do this. I don't read good. I'm dyslexic. Sometimes the words don't even make sense. I'm like, what? I got to read it three or four women. What does that even say? Come on. Sometimes it's like the whole words on the page is a foreign language right in the middle of preaching. Wait a minute. Oh, Lord Jesus. But the Lord speaks for me. Come on. You got to be willing to do it afraid, people of God. You got to be willing to do it afraid. The purpose that God has intended you for, that expected in, is what's walking with you. You're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. All right? I love you too. Listen, God is good, y'all. God is faithful. So I'm going to try my best to enjoy the rest of my time here in Florida. I'm trying to wake up my cupcake. Lord, please wake the woman of God up. She is really in there getting her beauty rest. <laughs> so we're going to um go we're going to try to go to the beach today and then um uh, get on the road uh first thing in the morning and I'm excited. We will be back. Let's see. So I will not be live tomorrow morning that I know of. But Tuesday morning, I will be live about 9, 9.15. I will be live at Glam School. So I'm excited about that. And we'll continue. Now, I do have a small announcement. If you have not ordered my book on Amazon, which I don't have in front of me. But if you have not ordered my book on Amazon, feel free to get that. It's going to bless you. You also are sewing into the ministry when you support. Uh, but it's going to be a great blessing to you. Um, but also, if you're not one who likes... Um, paper books and you like ebooks feel free to reach out to me because i would love to uh you can get the email version you can get the ebook copy um and you can send your 35 through cash app and you can email it uh you can reach out and i'll email you the book and so you can use get the book that way if you're not one who likes paper books i like paper books because i like to write and i'm underlined and do all those things but um Feel free. Feel free if you would like to get the ebook. Feel free to email me. My email address is aj at makeova, M A K E O V A T C, standing for transformation uh, church, tc.org. Um, the name of my book is Dolls Daily Devotional. Dolls 90 Day Devotional. Dolls 90 Day Devotional. It's not for women. I'm the doll, daughter of the living, loving Savior. It's for everybody. You read one devotional a day for 90 days, and I honestly believe that it is a life-changing read. Um, Doll's 90-day devotional it is available on Amazon, or you can contact me directly for the ebook version of that. It is $35. When you purchase, you are also sewing into the ministry. So, all right, people of God, I love y'all. Have a good day on purpose. If God be for you, He's greater than the world against you. Blessings and peace. I'm Apostle Julia, and I'm over and out.